Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And happy Easter. Welcome to St. Luke's Church as we gather on this day of resurrection, this glorious Easter day, and welcome to those who are watching from home on the live stream as well. So good to see so many gather this morning. The scripture says, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. We join together in singing our opening hymn, number 203, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Our service of Holy Eucharist continues on page 185 of the Book of Alternative Services. And we will use the Easter greeting in the middle of the page. And so, with great joy, we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together in singing the glory to God.
invite you to turn to the collect for today, which is printed in the bulletin toward the bottom of page two. Let us pray the collect together. Lord of life and power, through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have overcome the old order of sin and death and have made all things new in him. May we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, reign with him in glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit is alive, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. I invite Larry to come for the scripture. A reading from the book of Isaiah, the glorious new creation. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in, in it an infant that lives but a few, ye, for few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my pe people be. And my chosen <clears throat> shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they, while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like an ox. But the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Our psalm appointed today is Psalm 118, found on page 866. Page 866, verses 1 to 2, and 14 to 24. Read responsibly by half verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory. In the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord hath punished me sorely. But he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I, I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. And have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Shall we pray together? Holy, Holy and mighty, and mighty God, God, your, your son, son triumphed, triumphed over, over sin, sin and, death, and death, has opened to us the gate of eternal life. Purify your hearts that we may follow where we, he has gone and share in the radiance of his glory. We ask this in the sake of your Son, Jesus, risen Lord. Amen. 
I invite Kathy Ash to come for the second scripture reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Invite the choir to step forward as we sing Beyond the Cross. If you are able, I invite you to stand for the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. 
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Empty Tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. And then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you. O oh God, help us to listen to your word with understanding, to receive it with faith, and to obey it with courage, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. The title of this message is The Easter Call to Serve. This morning we heard the beautiful story of the resurrection as told by John. The account of the resurrection is recorded in each of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Each account is a little different from the others. And I encourage you to read each one and compare them and consider why they were told in that way. John tells us that early on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. And so she runs to Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, believed to be John, and tells them someone has taken the body. 
And then the two disciples run to the tomb and see for themselves that it is empty. And we are told that Peter sees the linen cloths lying there. And then the other disciple looks in and believes. And then the disciples return to their homes. But Mary stays outside the tomb weeping. It was an amazing morning for this woman from whom Jesus had cast out evil spirits, this woman who had poured expensive perfume over Jesus' feet. She now has a conversation with two angels and then with Jesus himself. At first, Mary did not recognize Jesus. Do you remember when she recognized him? When he called her by name. He simply says, Mary. Have you heard Jesus call you by name? Have you received his love like Mary did? Do you know that you are forgiven and Jesus has a place prepared for you in heaven? Jesus did not forget Mary, and Jesus will never forget you and me. He loves us unconditionally. And we can be encouraged this morning that Jesus loves us. He died for us so that our sins are forgiven, and he calls each of us by name. He even knows the numbers of hair on our heads. He knows us so intimately. Have you heard Jesus call you by name? Do you know what your personal calling is? What is God's plan for your life? Do you know it? Do you think you have said no to Christ and missed your chance and so God has tossed you aside? Do you feel you are not worthy enough to experience the life-transforming power of the resurrection? Take encouragement from Mary. God is not looking for people who are perfect. He is looking for folk who know they are not. It is when we honestly say, Father, I accept your will that God can use us. We place his life, our life in his hands, and then he can use us for his honor and glory. He calls each of us by name and is always ready to give us a second chance, a new opportunity, just as he did for Mary and for Peter and for the generations of the faithful who have served him all down through the centuries. God gave me a second chance to respond to his call. My call to ministry came a long time before I said yes to God. It took some 20 years before I recognized that God was calling me to ordain ministry. And finally, I said yes. You know, it was as if God was giving me a second chance. It was as if for the first time I heard God calling my name just as Jesus called Mary by name on that first resurrection morning. God calls each of us by name, and he has a plan and a purpose for each life. He has a plan for your life. Do you have a vision for the work that God has called you to do? Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But Easter is not about perishing, is it? Easter is about new life. It is about second chances. And you may ask, well, what difference does Easter make in my life? Where do I fit into God's plan? Is God willing to give me a second chance? As you hear the Easter message, is there anything stirring in your heart? Consider, what are the gifts that God has given you that you are able to use to serve others, to benefit others? 
Because in serving others, and serving the people around us, we are serving God. Are you handy with tools? There is always something that needs to be repaired around church property or for an elderly neighbor. After all, the church is called to be out there in the community. Do you enjoy cooking or baking? There are lots of opportunities to provide food, whether for a church function or to console a grieving family. And speaking of food, we had a, a breakfast downstairs before the service began, and there's still lots of food left down there, so the ladies asked me to invite everyone. If you don't have other plans, we'd love to have you come back down to the hall and have some refreshment and tea and coffee following the service. We'll be going down there because we have no other plans other than to go home, and so we'd love to see some folks come and join us. Are you a people person? Do you enjoy chatting with people? There are many who would appreciate a conversation. And while we are still in a pandemic, folks are not always comfortable with people visiting them face to face, but they would appreciate a phone call or maybe a little message through social, uh, social media just to connect with people. If you are not sure what your gifts are, and there are many, many gifts, each person here has a unique set of gifts that God has given you. And if you are not sure what your gifts are, ask a friend that you trust and respect for their opinion, because our friends help us recognize our gifts. Jesus knows what our gifts are. And this Easter, Jesus is calling every one of us by name. He calls us to a particular vocation or volunteer service. And the body of Christ is to continue building the church that the first disciples began some 2,000 years ago. And if God's church is going to grow, what are you and I doing about it? Because God is counting on us. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, how grateful we are on this Easter morning that the tomb is empty and Jesus is risen. Just as Jesus singled out Mary, he calls each of us by name. Help us to recognize and to use our gifts despite our shortcomings, our past failures, Thank you for giving us a second chance to respond to your call to follow you. Give us willing hearts to serve you and build up your church on earth that one day we may share in your eternal kingdom. We pray through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. I'm going to do them at the end. invite you to turn to the Nicene Creed on the bottom of page 188. And if you are able, I invite you to stand. Let us confess our faith as we say, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit 
he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite Larry to come and lead us in the prayers of the people. For the prayers of the people, we will use litany number 15, found on page 122 in the Book of Alternative Services. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. Lord, thank you for the joy of this Easter day and for all who faithfully share the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For those in the Anklin Cycle of Prayer, our parish family, and every congregation, turn our eyes to you that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. We pray to you, Lord. As we pray for missionaries and those trying to live out their faith under difficult circumstances, turn the eyes of your church to see the poor places in which Christ now dwells, that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. We pray to you, Lord. Hear us, Lord glory. Turn the eyes of ordinary people, young and old, poor and rich, to see the signs of Jesus, who came that we may live and have it abundantly, that God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. We pray to you, Lord. Hear us, Lord, Lord. Turn the eyes of all worshiping here or at home, beyond the four walls that surround them, that the Holy Spirit may help us find ways to reach out and provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. We pray to you, Lord. Hear us, Lord, Lord. As we hear reports of, of the pandemic and the horrific war in Ukraine and acts of violence as well as flooding and wildfires around the world, we pray for the victims and their families whose lives have been shattered. O oh God, turn the eyes of the leaders of nations to envision a new world in which peace and harmony reign. By your power, may wars, bloodshed, famine, and disease cease from all the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Hear us, Lord, Lord. We thank you, O Heavenly Father, for the life of your Son. Turn our eyes, continue to gaze with wonder at your miraculous ways. We pray for all who have requested our special prayers. For David Richards, Janice's husband, who fell and broke his hip and is waiting for surgery at the Fredericton Hospital. We give thanks for those who are recovering from surgery, from the coronavirus and other illnesses. We remember departed loved ones. We pray for Archbishop David and his family as they mourn the death of his mother, Doreen, and of Janet's stepmother who passed away in England. And we pray for all who mourn. That the risen Christ may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. We pray to you, Lord. We pray for one another, that God may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may listen and respond with open hearts and minds, and bear faithful witnesses to Christ's resurrection. We pray to you, Lord. 
Grant these prayers, O Father, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Continuing with the Confession and Absolution on page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. We join together in singing our offertory hymn number 210, the plate remains at the back. Hymn number 210, Yours Be the Glory. salvation 
receive all we offer you this day and grant that we who have confessed your name and received new life at baptism may live in the joy of the resurrection through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Using Eucharistic prayer number two, found on page 196. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you and so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. And gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For the breaking of bread, we use sentence number eight for the Easter season on page 213. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. We share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
I invite those in the chancel to come to the rail to receive communion, and the congregation will be administered from the floor. If you are able, I invite you to stand for the prayer after communion, followed by the doxology on page 214. God of life, bring us to the glory of the resurrection promised in this Easter sacrament. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Before we have the blessing and the recessional hymn, i just like to acknowledge those who are celebrating birthdays this week. And happy birthday to John Wetmore. And happy birthday to Sharon Hall. And to anyone else who may be celebrating a birthday this special time of year. And happy wedding anniversary to anyone who may be celebrating an anniversary. I'm going to ask Sandra if you would play the happy birthday song, please. John, John. Happy birthday to you. I'd also just like to remind folks uh, that there is a fundraiser for the Ukraine uh, humanitarian efforts uh, that's happening right now. We've all been watching images of that horrible war in Ukraine. And there is a large Ukrainian community all across Canada, but certainly in the Woodstock area as well. And so there will be a fundraiser to support the humanitarian efforts uh, in Ukraine. It will be held this coming 
uh, Saturday the 23rd at the Christian Academy School on Broadway Street uh, beginning at 12 noon until 4 p.m. There will be Ukrainian food and uh, there will be a barbecue and some other things happening and members of the local Ukrainian community. So it's an opportunity for us to support them and to have conversation with some folks. And I'm sure they have relatives that are over there now. And so it would be, I think, a blessing for them if we could come and support them. And certainly it will be meaningful for us to speak with, with Ukrainian people. And so I commend that to you this coming Saturday from 12 noon until 4. Also, just a reminder that we have a reception to follow. And because we have leftover food, there are croissants and muffins, and there's tea, coffee, and juice, and there's fruit, and all kinds of wonderful goodies down there. So if you're able, I encourage you to come downstairs afterwards. And let's say a little grace so that we can eat as soon as we go down. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the joy of this Easter. And we're mindful that we live in a troubled world, and we certainly pray for peace in Ukraine and wherever there is war and unrest, and for peace in the lives of your people. And bless us as we go about our day and celebrate with the resurrection with family and friends, and also for those who are coming to the hall afterwards. We ask that you would bless the food that we're about to receive, bless it to our use, bless our conversations. We lift thankful hearts to you today and asking that you would keep us mindful of the needs of others and give us the will to share what we have and to share and grow in our faith. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We join together in singing hymn number, oh, by the way, there are, there are Easter eggs and Easter carrots in a basket down at the back, and so please help yourselves as you go out. <laughs> Uh, we join together in singing hymn number 220, Christ is Risen, Christ is Risen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.